Welcome, thanks for checking out the video. Uh, today finds us at Webb's Landing. It's in Ocean Springs, Mississippi. This is early October and the weather has kind of taken a little bit of a cool turn. This is the first little cool snap of the season. Uh, winds are kind of pushing out of the north. It's, you know, about 15 miles an hour. And I'm thinking that the bait and all that is going to be pushed out of the grass as the water level drops. The tide's going to be falling today. And I'm hoping to take advantage of some of that. Signed up for a little online tournament, so I'm going to be trying to catch a few good-sized redfish. I'm going to be trying to catch a, good, a few good-sized flounder to eat, so let's see what happens. Starting today with my old faithful. If you've watched many of my bass videos, you know this lure well. It's uh, caught me a ton of bass. Let's see how it does in salt. There's a little hookup. Let's see what that is. It looks like a little speckled trout. Alright. <laughs> that guy only went about 14 and a half inches, so size minimum for specs is 15. Put that guy in the water and he lives to fight another day. After that fish, ended up giving that top water about 30 minutes, didn't get any other really sniffs on it. So I put it away and I started to fish the Lucky Strike 2 inch crappie minnow. It's just a chartreuse little crappie minnow on a jig head. It has been known to produce some giant fish, never ever ever produces small ones. Let's see what I can do. Oh, what do we have here? Let's see, feels like a, oh, that is an absolute giant. So this crappie minnow produces giants like that all the time. But it's kind of hard to catch giant fish like that all day. So we're only going to use that for a little while. And we're going to make another bait switch to a Z-Man Streaks 3.75. Um, I've worked north through this marsh system a little bit. And let's see what's all up through here. So the method of retrieve for this little streaks, it's just a jerk shad type bait on a net head. Just throw it out, let it hit the bottom, give it some little short hop, hop, hops. Oh, and here we've hooked up with something. What is this? Let's see. It feels like it's staying down. Oh, it's a little flounder. So the Mississippi size minimum for flounder is 12 inches. So I'm believing this guy is going to go 12 inches. Right, he goes about 12 and a half, so we're going to put this guy in the cooler. Little camera shot right there, and in the cooler he goes. Working my way out of that creek, giving that little streaks, little hop, hop, hops along the way. So anytime I come to a intersection where a little creek drains out or goes in, I'm going to focus on that really good because those are perfect flounder ambush spots. Flounder right there, I think he followed it for a minute and didn't hit it till it was kind of getting out in the middle. He feels pretty sizable. Let's see. I hope he's kicking up some boils in the water. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, he feels pretty good. I'm gonna get the net for him. And bada boom. Another flounder. That's flounder two out of the same little creek. This is turning out to be a pretty good morning so far. Okay, get that guy in the cooler. Boga grip sure do come in handy for inshore fishing. Because uh, all these fish in here pretty much have teeth. So I've eased out of this creek right here. I've hooked up with a few small little trout and things, but I didn't include all those because uh, they were not too big. Um, you can see there's a little more current coming from that wind. Now that I've got out here in the main part of Graveline Bayou, and I'm just kind of working up north, 
um, that wind is I'm pushing north and that wind is coming out of the north so I'm facing into it and I'm just trying to hop that streaks as I work this grass line I'm trying to parallel that grass line as much as I can and I'm thinking that's where all the fish are going to be holding up There's one. What is it? It was a good little thump. Let's see what this guy is. Man, he's kind of staying down. Oh, it looks like a flounder. And that'll be flounder number three if we can get him in the net. This guy, oh, he seems to be pretty sizable too compared to the ones that we've been catching. Let's see. Is he measure? Yeah, he'll measure. Get some good little fillets off that guy. Good deal. So that's three flounder in the cooler. Life is good. fish is running if that's a flounder that's a whopper right there he's uh he's pulling pretty good oh it's not a flounder it is a juvenile redfish little rat red looks like maybe 14 15 inches so that little photo tournament that I'm in it's got to be a 16 inch minimum so I don't think that guy is gonna make it and if he did make it he wouldn't really do anything for me so just toss him back working the same grass lines a good sign there's a few redfish in here and what do I have here? Oh, this guy's pulling. He's pulling good. What is that? That's got to be a good redfish. So I'm just kind of along for the ride here. He's pulling me all over the place. This guy just will not give it up and uh, part of that I guess is due to that kind of light action spinning rod and I think I've only got like 10 pound test leader on here so <clears throat> I don't want to bow up on him too much and he's got me in all that grass but this guy just won't give it up we're just along for the ride Got him in the net. Okay, that was a long fight. That was a powerful fish. Let's see how long he is. Looks like 23 inches. Alright, so I read the rules of this tournament and I don't see anything about having to release the fish and fried and black and red fish sure are delicious. So we're going to go ahead and throw this guy in the cooler. It's the good thing about saltwater fish. A lot of these fish sure do taste good. Now I've got that streaks going on. Wouldn't think of changing now because it's already treating me pretty nice. That streaks 3.75 motor oil color. Popping it on a net head and we got something else. What is this? This might be another redfish. He feels pretty stout. Let's see. Oh, oh, yep, definitely red, definitely red. Running all in that grass. Those redfish sure are a powerful fish. It's 
it's always very apparent coming back to salt water from bass fishing bass normally you set the hook get them in but these redfish they fight and fight and fight and they don't come in until they are just absolutely wore out and ready And this guy's not making quite as many runs as that first fish. I think we're almost there. We're almost there. And unfortunately for the camera, it's not really a good side of the boat for a good camera netting. But we're going to do what we can. I think I'm going to take my boga grips and see if I can just boga grip him. Sometimes that works out. Got him with the boga. And this is another pretty decent redfish. Not quite as big as the other one, but he's a decent guy. And there we go. These are some powerful fish. Let's see how long he is. This one will go 23 and a quarter inches, it looks like. That's wild that that fish is longer than the other one, but the other one was more powerful. Let's get him in the ice chest, and we're getting a pretty sizable little fish haul. made a switch from going north into the wind because I ran into a cluster of boats where I was headed so I decided to turn around and kind of go with the current it's not my preferred way to fish but we're gonna see if we can pick up a couple kind of drifting back towards the launch hopping that streaks kind of see that hopping it with that rod tip and I've had a little couple little taps along this bank here I think I'm about to hook up with something pretty decent All right, I think this is, it seems like a redfish. He's got a, pulling a little bit of drag. He's got some size to him, but he's not going to be a keeper red. It's going to be a little rat red. They're fun to catch anyway. Sometimes they'll make you think you got a big old flounder. Back in the water, little buddy, to fight another day. And let's get back to it. Got to get that streaks rigged back up and get back to hopping. this point getting fairly close back to the launch I'm gonna think I'm like one curve away just throwing out kind of hopping that streaks hop 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 every now and then I'll have a croaker tap it but uh, it gets to come to the point to where you can kind of tell what the croakers are these fish are right on that grass line just about right where I thought they were those red fish were on the grass line the flounder have come out from the grass line Pretty much all these fish are on the grass line just smoking shrimp. And I've been seeing shrimp skitter all along the grass this morning. And we've hooked up with something here. Let's see. This is another little flounder. I think this guy's going to be over 12 also. So that'll be four flounder and two redfish for our total. Get this guy in the cooler and that's going to be a good fish haul. And that's about all the fish that we're going to catch on this trip. I did end up fishing a few more hours, but I didn't really do anything as substantial as my morning bite. This is just me kind of coming back up to the launch. Uh, this was my first trip at Webb's Landing, and it's a pretty cool place, but it does get a lot of boat traffic. So if you show up in a kayak, just be prepared to have a bunch of boaters around you. Um, thanks for watching. If this is your first video of mine that you checked out, hopefully you enjoyed it. And if it's not the first video of mine you checked out, hopefully you, you still enjoyed it like the others. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe, and see you on the next one.